Hi, Mark Donovan from Falcon Imagery, and today I'm going to go over the power curve in the region of reverse command and how we arrive at that by looking at drag versus airspeed, and then the resulting types of airspeed such as uh, best glide, best rate of climb, and best angle of climb. So follow along. Okay, well, let's get into it. The power curve in the region of reversed command and what it's all about. So we first want to talk about the forces acting on an aircraft and the thrust versus power relationship. In regards to the aircraft itself, it has four forces working on it. Two uh, forces opposing each other in the vertical direction and two forces uh, opposing each other in the horizontal direction. First, we have lift that wants to pull the plane up and we have weight, gravitational force of the earth, uh, pulling the plane down. And then in regards to uh, forward progress in the horizontal plane, we have thrust trying to pull the aircraft forward and we have drag trying to pull it backwards. In unaccelerated flight, the sum of these opposing forces is always zero. So if this aircraft is flying at the same velocity, at the same altitude, um, the lift and weight forces opposing each other um, have a result of zero, and the thrust versus drag uh, forces um, working against each other have a net force of zero. So with that basic concept, we're going to move on and talk a little bit about what thrust versus power is. Thrust is expressed in terms of pounds, for example, 3,000 pounds of thrust. Power is expressed as work done per unit of time. For piston aircraft, power is measured in horsepower. Power required in horsepower is equal to thrust required times airspeed divided by 375. And power available in horsepower is equal to thrust available times airspeed divided by 375. Now, all of these things will make sense to you in the subsequent slides, but I just wanted to make sure that there's an um, understanding of the difference between the two. Thrust is a measure of um, that's expressed in units of pounds, whereas power is expressed in units of horsepower, and power is associated with time, whereas thrust is not. So let's look at drag versus airspeed and VG and VX, best glide and best angle of climb. If we look here in this um, graph about to plot, we've got drag, which is equivalent also to thrust required, versus airspeed. And we're going to base this the set of slides or that are going to come up here on a fixed altitude, flying at a fixed altitude with the weight and aircraft configuration the same in the draw scenarios. First thing we want to look at this is graph here of induced drag. So we have two types of drag, induced drag and parasitic drag, which we'll get into next. But induced drag at very slow airspeeds is high um, drag, but at higher airspeeds we have less drag. And the induced drag is a function of the lift, or basically the angle of attack. If you can see here, very slow airspeeds, we have a high angle of attack, but as we get up in faster airspeeds, our angle of attack comes down, uh, reducing the amount of induced drag, and at uh, full cruise speed, at our max cruise speed, for example, 100 knots, we don't have much of an angle of attack, and thus our induced drag is very limited. Then we have parasitic drag that kind of works in the um, opposite direction, and it's a square, uh, the, the rate of increase of parasitic drag is um, the square of the airspeed. So what types of parasitic drag? We have form drag. It's kind of the shape of the aircraft, um, antennas, um, the surface of the aircraft uh, uh, as, it, as, it's, as it's moving forward through the, through the air, um, the landing gear, etc. Then we have the skin friction drag. This is literally like the surface of the wings, the surface of the fuselage. It's not perfectly smooth. There's um, microscopic bumps, if you will, on it. Uh, the rivets, etc. Those all cause friction, and it's known as skin uh, friction drag. And then we have interference drag. This is where, let's say, the strut connects to the wing or the wing connects to the fuselage. All these types of drag represent parasitic drag. Um, at slow airspeeds, we have a high angle of attack, but we're going very slow. But as we go up in airspeed, well, our angle of attack gets smaller and our airspeed increases. But as we increase in speed, these forms of drag, all known as parasitic drag, um, increase as the square of the airspeed. Um, if we take the sum now of the parasitic drag and the induced drag and plot it along the airspeed axis, we get this total drag or thrust, total thrust required, um, representing um, the total uh, drag or thrust required to have the aircraft fly. It is at this lowest point um, in this curve where we have the least overall drag, and thus the aircraft can sustain flight uh, the longest with the least amount of power. 
And this is known as our best glide, or VG. I used an example of 73 knots in this case for such as a Piper Warrior. On the left-hand side, as the aircraft gets slower and slower and slower, we get to a point where we stall. Whether it be a power on or power off stall, you get slow enough, uh, depending on the particular V-stall, VS0, VS1, the aircraft will stall. If we look at the thrust available uh, graph or line, um, we see, and we superimpose it over this graph, we see and we look for the largest range of excess thrust available to the thrust required, and that point comes here, straight down, and represents our VX, or best angle of climb, 63 knots, for example, in a Piper Warrior. And thrust, again, is based on the amount of pounds um, of lifting capability that the aircraft has. As you'll notice this chart, this line goes down, um, as it increases in speed, there's left less lifting action and there's just more um, power, if you will, um, and that is why the thrust decreases with a shallower angle of attack and as you increase in airspeed. Now, if we look at power or horsepower versus airspeed in VY, again, we have similar um, axes of horsepower now and versus airspeed. And we have a max power available. And you'll notice the max power available is not a straight line, whether you're going zero knots or 100 knots. Um, the reason it's not a straight line is efficiencies associated with the propeller. So this is our max power available, um, and it, it varies uh, with the basically the airspeed that you're going in your angle of attack. And then here is the power required. Um, and again, what you saw in the uh, first slide, you notice that max power is associated with max thrust times airspeed uh, divided by 375 and same max power required uh, or power required same deal it's thrust required times airspeed divided by 375. so we wind up getting these power curves and from these power curves we can determine our max level flight um, airspeed uh, we can also determine our best rate of climb so the part of the curve where we get our largest um, separation between max power available and max power required equals our VY, which is 79 knots for a Piper Warrior. And again, I plotted here best glide, uh, again, 73 knots in a Piper Warrior. Again, as you get slower, um, you increase the, the angle of attack, and at some point you exceed the angle of attack and you stall. And that's this region down here. We also have the region of normal command. This area here if we want to go faster and we add more power, we'll, go, we'll be able to go faster while maintaining the same level of flight. If we want to go in the area of what they call region of reverse command, as we go slower, we also need to add more power in order to keep the aircraft flying. At some point, though, with all of our power in, trying to go extremely slow, we'll get to a point where we do stall. And so this is the region of reverse command. More power is required to go much slower. And in this side here, more power is required to go faster. It's in this region here that we have to be very, very careful. Uh, particularly this happens coming in for, let's say, a landing, where you're reducing power. You may get below the glide speed. And in order to maintain altitude, you need to add significantly more power, particularly as you get slower and slower and slower. It's exponentially going up. And as you can see here, this picture here, uh, we have an aircraft with a slight angle of attack, V-glide. As we get slower, the angle of attack gets steeper. And at VS, where the aircraft's just about to stall, the angle of attack is extremely high. And at this point, max power is in, the angle of attack now is getting so high that you're starting to exceed the critical angle of attack, and the aircraft stalls. So hopefully that gave you a better insight into the power curve and the region of reverse command and how uh, power and thrust required versus power and thrust available are used to calculate the best glide speed, the best rate of climb, the best angle of climb. But most importantly, I hope you get a better understanding now of the area of or region of reverse command and how when you get into the region of reverse command, uh, how power, a lot of power is necessary to maintain altitude and even more power if you're trying to climb away when you're that slow. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you did, consider hitting the like button and subscribing to the channel.